and welcome to advanced video number four. I'd like to talk about the concept of the sound column and resonance. Now resonance is, if you like to think about two different mediums, for example, maybe the body and the voice and the harmonics of a room, for example. When they oscillate at the same frequency, you get added amplitude, you get more volume. For example, if I, being a wonderful singer, went into the bathroom, sang a note, and that locked into one of the harmonic frequencies of the room, that note would be louder. And you will have experienced that before when you say something to someone in a car park or under a ledge or something. There are harmonics in an enclosed area. And so when we add energy to that, you get extra amplification and the sound of resonance. So let's take that equation of the two mediums and think about that in the equation of the body and the trumpet. Now, firstly, I'd like to pose a question for you. If you were to fill the trumpet, now forget the valves for the purpose of this exercise. If you were to fill the trumpet from lead pipe, start of the lead pipe to the end of the bell with water, uh, how much water would you get into the, to the, the pipe? Have a think about that for a minute. Then think about taking a big breath into the body, the second part of the equation. How much air can you breathe in when you, when you take a deep breath? And that changes with everyone. So let's go back to the trumpet. How much water? In your standard B flat trumpet, now I've got my C trumpet here, but in the standard B flat trumpet, it's about 300 mil of water. Some people have said 100 mil, some people have said three liters. So that's interesting. Um, we can fit about 300 mil, just over a cup in the pipe, yet I can breathe in about six liters of air. And depending on what sex you are and how old you are, that, that changes. Your vital capacity is different. But let's, for the equation sake, go 300 mil in trumpet, 600, uh, six liters in the body. Where is most of the sound being generated? Now, if I show you a picture of a very famous opera singer, Pavarotti, if you look at the picture, where do you think the sound is being generated? Is it in his head or is it in his body or is it both? Of course it's both, but we tend to not think about the body's role in sound production, especially the quality of the sound. So I'd like to cement the idea of the sound column in your mind and think that the the air molecules that exist in the trumpet and in the body need to oscillate at the same frequency. The trumpet has a preset set of harmonics. Now, the uh, molecules oscillate through the pipe, through the lips, into the body. Now, to get resonance, we need to have both mediums oscillating at the same frequency. I recently had someone say to me, Greg, I love your videos, I love the way you teach, but I don't move my mouth when I play higher on the trumpet. It's just all got to do with the air and what I do with the air. So I said, okay, that's fine. Let me demonstrate two things, two different demonstrations. Here's demonstration number one. Demonstration number two. Now it's quite clear that those two demonstrations are rather different. 
So what's happening here? Why is that changing? I almost want to finish this video now and get you to have a think about it, but I'm going to tell you. What's changing is this is preset. The frequency here is preset. So we need to match that harmonic of the low C at this end, the body end of the equation. If the body end doesn't change, the energy from this six liters of the equation can override the harmonics of this, and that's what's happening here. I'm pushing the valves down, but I'm not changing anything in my mouth. I'm not changing my tongue position or my mouth, my muscles in the face, lips, nothing's changing. I'm merely pushing the valves down. But if I want to make a resonant sound, I must match from the body, thanks to the change in shape, especially the tongue position, to match the frequency of the, the trumpet. So once the correct change is made, and it's very, very, very subtle, it's so subtle, in fact, most people don't actually recognize that it's happening. And that's fine until you get to that ceiling when you go, why can't I play that next note up in the upper register? I can't find it. Therefore, when you can't find, you know, you don't have the correct shape, we start and use all strain and force and push, compensate from the body because we don't know the shape. So let's learn the shape of each note now. Now, I know there are going to be many um, you know, teachers out there that go, why on earth are you talking about the tongue? And most people won't recognize that there's a subtle change in the tongue position. What's happening when the tongue changes position, it's changing the harmonic structure inside the oral cavity. And it's therefore allowing the body to match the required pitch on the trumpet. And of course, there's a tiny change in what I call the aperture corners. So there's two little processes going on and they're so subtle you probably don't even recognize it. And in the low register, we just use our ear to find the sound that we want. And those uh, changes take place automatically. And of course, that's what we want all over the instrument. At the end of the day, we want to see the note and hear the note straight away and have that mental picture of the sound in our mind control the mechanics and we play. Now that's all well and good in the ideal world, but the fact that we uh, run into problems with uh, especially range is because we get to a point where we don't know what this needs to do and therefore we compensate with strain. So if I can get you to consider that the tongue position is changing all the way up and sadly, I, I, I need to go into something that's rather controversial. I got uh, a lot of great information from the Claude Gordon School of Teaching and his books made me recognize that the tongue actually did change shape. Now the idea that you know, the tongue arches in the mouth so it speeds the air up and you play higher notes, that's unfortunately incorrect and it's something that <laughs> there's a lot of discussions on forums about this and and i'm i don't get into arguments about it but i just get you to uh, recognize that the tongue changing position does not mean that you're going to change the tension at the aperture corners the aperture corners is what grips the trumpet that's what actually selects the harmonic that you're going to play on here it's the combination of the two um, well, there's about a million processes or 10 million processes going on, but some tangible ones that we can recognize are a bit of grip in the corners and a change in the, the tongue position. And if, as again, I'll demonstrate, if I move the tongue around in the mouth, I can arch it all the way up and drop it all the way down without moving the jaw or the lips. And it's going to change the timbre of the sound. <laughs> I move the valve without changing the lips or the tongue. When I change them together, there are a few processes going on. So if you're trying to just work tongue level alone without recognizing what's happening here, you may 
be having a little bit of a struggle. But when you recognize it's a system that goes uh, together, then you'll recognize the small changes that have to happen in order for that sound column to create a pure resonant sound. Predetermined harmonics, we make the harmonic, put them together. If they match, the lips vibrate sympathetically to the changing air pressure in the, in the system. If all of a sudden the energy from the body is at a different frequency to the pre-required or predetermined harmonic on the instrument, the poor lips that are supposed to be oscillating loosely like the vocal cords, they start to become under a lot of pressure. And that's where that tension and strain in the body comes from. So I want to eliminate that by drawing your attention to the fact that even in a low register, there are small changes going on. And as the tongue changes position, it's changing the harmonic structure of the mouth. And even if you don't notice that it's changing, it's changing. It can't not because the equation of instrument and body must equal each other to get a sound column and pure resonance. Okay, I hope that is um, of interest to you. And the next, the advanced video number five, is about actually basically singing through the instrument. I want the lips to interact with the air exactly the same way the vocal cords do, and I'll show you how that's done in advanced video number five. Thanks for watching. Please send me an email, ask for some, if there's anything you'd like me to do a video on, anything like that, or just say g'day, um, feel free to drop by and send me a message. All the best, see you in the next video.